Hello, friends, and welcome. Good to be with you again today as we try to, to live the command to love one another as Christ loved us and to forgive as he, as he forgives us. So let's begin by blessing ourselves in, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I met a couple once uh, here in our parish uh, who have lost so much weight. And I asked them, how did you do it? Are you on some kind of a diet? He says, no, it's a totally li new lifestyle that we chose to, to live. And as a result, we've lost the weight. Forgiveness is like that. It has to become a lifestyle for us. It has to come naturally to us. Because we have to realize that we are not perfect either, you know. Sometimes, uh, uh, and in some cases, actually, the one who offends us, it's maybe even better than us that uh, uh, have been offended. I have an interesting quote from Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, he has said and done so many great things, and this quote is also on that book, Why Forgive, which uh, I'm holding those many sessions for another week or two, I think, and that's it, you know, then it's Lent. <laughs> so this is what he says. Dr. Kim said that, there are some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. And that when we learn this, we'll be more loving and forgiving. He also said, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It's a permanent attitude. In other words, it is something you have to work for just like you have to work to keep your body fit and your mind alert. You've got to work on your heart too. Forgiving is not just a one-time decision. You've got to live forgiveness every day. I started with uh, the Hail Mary prayer today because at the end of it, it's something that we should think about every single day. Pray for us at the hour of our death. If we don't think about death, we will probably think that we will live forever. So then we have no need to forgive those who have offended us and hurt us. But we don't live forever. And the longer we wait, the worse it becomes. I like to tell stories, obviously. And uh, and and. Uh, there is a story about, about this person who goes to the doctor. He has cancer on his finger. And, uh, and the doctor says that uh, we have to amputate the finger. And he says, no, no, no. My hand is going to look funny without the, with the four, fi four fingers. And so he refuses. The cancer starts spreading. He goes back to the doctor. And the doctor says, we have to amputate your arm. He says, oh, my God, no. I'm going to look even funnier without, you know, without an arm. Well, he says, the doctor says, you do whatever you want. It's your call. And then he goes home and, you know, he's not feeling well. He goes back to the doctor and he said, uh-oh, your cancer spread. And you don't have much to live. So then he says, amputate my pinky. He says, it's a little late. Please take, take off my arm. He said, it is a little late. You are going to die. Forgiveness is like that. If we do not forgive and move on with our life, if we do not bring the pride that we feel and the hurt that we have and all, all this that makes forgiveness almost impossible, let's bring him to the cross. Give him to Jesus. Ask him to give us the strength. Pray to the Blessed Mother. 
Imagine how much hatred she should have towards all those who have crucified her son. Imagine how much hatred she should have towards all those who still crucify his son in his brothers and sisters in us. That we mistreat, that we hate, that we hurt in so many ways, not just physically, but more, more, even more, more, more importantly, uh, spiritually. So may God bless you. Pray for me. I will pray for you. Pray for those who have hurt us. God bless you.